Hello everyone. Uh, I want to share some things with you again today that uh, have been kind of interesting. Some interesting things have been taking place uh, here in the month of June. As we are recording this today, it is June the 21st, which is the summer solstice. And, um, you know, the heavens declare the glory of God. God created the heavens and the, all the different uh, signs and different things that go on with the heavens. The Lord did it. So it's been a significant day for me in times past. And kind of interestingly, uh, we had planned to film this little video blog last Thursday. And uh, some things came up and we didn't do it. And I was planning on doing it on Tuesday at the 20th and that didn't happen. And then it turns out we were filming it today and it turns out to be the 21st, which I realized this morning was, a, was the right date. It was the right time to do something because uh, I had some things happened uh, on June the 21st, 2007, 10 years ago today. Interestingly, Bob Jones gave me a word years ago when I first wrote my first book, Thrones of the Soul. And uh, he said that the things I prophesied would be 10 years ahead of themselves. <laughs> of course, when you're writing a book, you're not wanting a prophet to say the book will be more relevant 10 years later than the time you, you first write it. But, but it's turned out that's been true. There's been a, a cycle of things that have happened in my life that have worked in 10-year cycles. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping what I'm about to share with you has reached a 10-year cycle and we're about to see the reality of some of what uh, we prophesied. Uh, before I share the vision that I had, I, I want to just mention one thing that, uh, that is relevant to this. And, and there was a book that I read uh, that opened a door for me. You know, sometimes in our life there are kairos moments where just there is a culmination of things that bring you to a certain point, And then there is something that triggers it, something that launches you into a whole new arena that literally impacts the remainder of your life. Well, that happened with me with this book right here called I Believe in Visions by Kenneth Hagin. And uh, in 1989, I had just entered into understanding the things of the Spirit, received the baptism in January, and sometime around mid-1989, you know, I purchased everything Kenneth Hagin had and came across this book. Didn't know what was in it, but I love the title. And so I began to read it, and I, when I did, something happened to me. It was almost like this book right here was a key that went into a door and unlocked the door and opened up a whole new arena to me that has literally influenced every single day of my life from then until now. I'm praying something like that happens for you as well, that there are keys that unlock doors that take you into a realm of the Spirit where you see things and hear things and understand things and begin to live your life from the arena of the Spirit rather than from the earthly perspective. But what captured me so much was the, the story, which I'll just share in a very capsuled way, of Kenneth Hagin uh, in, in a prayer meeting in, in, in September of 1950 in Rockwall, Texas. Um, in a tent meeting and it had been raining, you know, for several days. So not many people came to the, to the meeting. So they were having a little prayer meeting. He was knelt, he knelt uh, next to a chair and was praying. And while he was praying, he heard an audible voice say, come up hither. And he wasn't sure who said it. So the voice said again, come up hither. And he looks up and he sees the Lord Jesus at the top of the tent. A lot of things happened, but ultimately the Lord took him to heaven took Kenneth Hagin to heaven. You know, you might say, well, how do we know this vision was real? Well, look at the fruit of his ministry from 1950 until the time he went on to be with the Lord. I think that validates the man had the experience. And he was taken to heaven. He was stood before the throne. He saw the Father sitting on the throne. He saw the rainbow around the throne. He saw the four living creatures and all of this throne room activity. And there stood the Lord Jesus Christ right in front of him. And I'll never forget, he said he looked into his eyes and he said they looked like wells of living love. And when I read that in 1989, something happened. A door opened, an arena opened up to me. And it began to launch me into to, to an understanding that we prophesy and believe for today. You know, we've been doing a series of webinars the last uh, several months on the book of Revelation, dealing with Revelation 2 and 3, the seven church ages. 
and we're going to come eventually to the end of, of the, the Laodicean church age. And you will notice in, in, in Revelation 3, when the Laodicean age ends, then you have Revelation 4, which is come up hither. Come up here. It, was, it is quoting Revelation 4.1. If you'll remember, there was no division in the chapters when John wrote the, the epistle of Revelation, the letter. It was, there were no chapter divisions. So we went right from the seven churches of, of Asia Minor, which we now know are the seven church ages, into Revelation 4.1, which was the revelation of the king and his kingdom, throne room revelation, throne room encounters. He said, I, I looked and behold, a door was standing open in heaven and a voice said unto me, come up here. And I will show you things that will take place after this. And the King James come up hither and I will show you things that will take place hereafter. And that's the very verse that Kenneth Hagin heard quoted. And I really believe this is the scripture the Lord is giving to us for right now. On this very day, June the 21st, 2007, two, 10 years ago today, I had a pretty profound experience. It was one of those where you're just taken someplace. While it's going on, I remember, even right now as I'm telling it, I can see it in my heart. And it's, while you're having it, you don't realize it's not real until it's over. But it was real, but it's, you feel like you're living it in the natural at the time. And in this experience, I was taken to a desert area. There are many aspects of it we may share in another blog someday. But I knew where I was, and I knew that I was at a place where seven angels came and released into the earth revelation that is relevant to the end of the age, revelation that will prepare the bride of Christ for the coming of the Lord and, and manifest power for the sons of the kingdom. I, I, I was there and, and I knew what was taking place when those seven angels came. And, and as I'm standing there in this desert place, a messenger from God walked towards me and, and I stopped him and I said, is the Revelation 4-1 door open? I said it kind of aggressively. And, and the messenger said nothing, just looked at me. And I said it even more aggressively, which would not have been my nature. Is the Revelation 4-1 door open? And the messenger from heaven pointed his finger at me and said, the door is open. And I prophesied that 10 years ago today. Uh, that very day, which was the summer solstice that year as well, I flew to Chicago and prophesied it right there in Chicago. And I believe we've, we've lived a 10-year cycle, and, and I'm, I'm encouraged to put it that way. I, I, I certainly believe we have seen a lot of revelation over the last 10 years. If you look back at the messages that major leaders have preached over the last 10 years, you'll find that a lot of it has emphasized the things of the Spirit. John said in Revelation 2, I was in, immediately I was in the Spirit. An invitation from God, come up here. That's the invitation. John responds, immediately I was in the Spirit. And I think the essence of the point I want to make in this little brief blog today is that we as God's people, as the end time army, as the bride of Christ, must become more acclimated to the realm of the Spirit than we are to the natural realm. And I believe that literally. Yes, I want to see visions. I want to see the Lord like Kenneth Hagin did. And I want to have visionary encounters. But it's not just about a one-time visitation. It's not just about occasional visions. It, uh, it is about a daily access to the kingdom realm, accessing Revelation 4.1 and beginning to live your life as if you are living it from the very throne room of God. The kingdom of heaven is within and the king and his kingdom reside in us and there is a different anointing now. There is a different perspective that is being given to a body of people and, and those that are destined for this, those that are hungry and desperate for this will be given access. And there's going to be a different kind of message coming forth, you know, and we've already seen that to a large degree, but even now in the next cycle of things in the Spirit, there will be a, a, a more pronounced revelation of the, of the King's heart. The Lord is the King of kings. That means He is the King over kings. He is the Lord over lords. We are called to be both priests and kings before the Lord. 
And that's what we see in Revelation 5 when he, you know, he overcame and took the book and he empowered a body of people to live on the earth as priests and kings. That's all the, the throne room revelation that you see right there in Revelation 4 and 5. I know that's a little meaty stuff, but we talk about some of this in the webinars. But as far as this blog is concerned today, I just wanted to release something. Whatever's on me today, I, I didn't plan to have this webinar, this little blog today on the 21st. It just worked out that it did. And then I realized this morning, oh my goodness, that, that was exactly 10 years ago to the day. God's timings are perfect. So I hope it encourages you to begin to believe, to access the realm of the Spirit. You might say, yes, that's for the prophets and the apostles. No, it's for anybody who's willing to believe. I believe that. It's for anyone who's willing to believe God and begin to live what the Word says. So I release that to you. I pray, Lord, that even this blog maybe would be like a key, like this book was for me, that it will be a key that unlocks a realm to a body of people to begin to access throne room revelation, throne room encounters, throne room understanding of the scriptures. Lord, that you would be glorified, that you would in, you empower a body of people to do everything you said they would do on this earth before you returned. Grant that, Lord, I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.